So enough of that generalization stuff. Let's look at a particular spectrum. And here is the infrared spectrum of ethanol. OK, all spectra that I'm going to use in this taken from the SDBS web, right? The National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology in Japan. And I accessed all of them between June the 20th and the 21st, 2020. So I'm not going to cite every single spectrum on every single movie. They all came from this general position. So anyway, here's the spectrum of ethanol. Now I want first of all to look at the axes. You see on the bottom axis, the x-axis here, that's the wave number in reciprocal centimeters that we just talked about those. And notice that the way that the spectrum is presented, the numbers go down. So you have the high wave numbers on the left hand side and the low wave numbers on the right hand side. OK, now the vertical axis is percent T. That's the percent transmission. Now, essentially, when you shine light on an object, some of that light goes through. That light has been said to be transmitted and the light that doesn't go through is said to be absorbed. So the higher the transmission, the more boring it is, the lower the transmission, the more has been absorbed and the more interesting it is. And so as we start here, we see, well, nothing's been absorbed, nothing's been absorbed, Ooh, lots absorbed there, back up, not as much absorbed, lots absorbed there, blah, 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 then up here, effectively nothing, 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 some absorbed, back up again, and then quite a lot absorbed, back up again, bit absorbed, back up again, and so on, okay? So you almost, if you're interested in absorbance, you almost have to look at it upside down, the lower the peak, the more that has been absorbed. OK, and you can see that what we've got here is we've definitely definitely got some strong absorbances and some sort of uh, medium ones and then some weak ones up here. Now, if I pull up our chart, what we see is that for ethanol, of course, and I haven't drawn the structure because you'll know what ethanol is, but we've got carbon carbon bonds that you don't even really mess with. The carbon carbon bonds going to be down here. They're broad. You really don't look at those on infrared unless you're a super duper infrared expert person. OK, what we are interested in, though, are those bonds to hydrogen and then bonds to oxygen. So as we look up this end of the spectrum here and let's put it in a little box, this is where those bonds to hydrogen are formed. This is where bonds to hydrogen really absorb well. And so in this particular molecule, of course, we have OH bonds. Well, OH bonds are going to be strong and broad. Well, that's the perfect strong, broad thing right there, isn't it? So that is due to the OH bonds in the ethanol molecule changing their vibration up to a higher energy. So nothing absorbed, lots absorbed by the OHs. And then we also have some carbon hydrogen bonds in there that absorb between 2800 and 3100. Well, that's these right there. OK, generally a weaker signal. This is actually a pretty good one in ethanol for CH bonds. Now, then there's nothing, 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 nothing till we get down to these strong ones down here that are between about 1000 and 1100. Well, those correspond perfectly to a carbon oxygen single bond absorbance. OK, so this was a simple spectrum, believe it or not. OK, I want you to notice the form of it, that as we go from left to right, the wave numbers are going down and the transmission from zero to 100 percent up, which means that the higher the particular part of the spectrum, the more boring it is, the lower it is the more interesting. And what we're doing with our infrared is we are identifying particular bonds in the molecule. 